and welcome to x-ray review on this video we're going to go through the abdominal aortic aneurysm as seen on x-ray let's start by taking a look at a patient with significant atherosclerosis atherosclerosis will show up on an x-ray as conduit wall calcification throughout the expectant area of the abdominal aorta common iliac or renal arteries just like this patient if a patient doesn't have atherosclerosis that shows up on an x-ray, it will be extremely challenging to ever see an abdominal aortic aneurysm. These two peripherally dense circles represent atherosclerosis of the renal arteries seen on FOSS. Here we can visualize the bifurcation of the abdominal aorta into the common iliac arteries and then both the left and right common iliac arteries. The most common location to see an abdominal aortic aneurysm is infrarenal and superior to the bifurcation of the common iliac arteries. Remember, radiographs only give an estimate size of what is calcified, meaning there can be a dissecting abdominal aortic aneurysm that's not calcified and you'll never see it on the x-ray. That's why ultrasonography or CT are more appropriate diagnostic tools for measuring the true size and complications of any type of abdominal aortic aneurysm, and CT is the gold standard. One of the more common questions I get in reference to an abdominal aortic aneurysm is how big is too big and what should be done? And there is a lot of different information out there, it really depends on the resources that you're utilizing, but this is what I use when I write reports. Essentially three centimeters to three and a half is big enough to call dilatation um, or a small focal aneurysm. Over 3.5 centimeters, it's an aneurysm. Everybody's going to agree on that. Over five centimeters is where you're going to have to really start looking into medical consults. Uh, and then over seven centimeters is a more immediate medical consultation. But anything on this list if seen on an x-ray, should then go to either ultrasonography first or CT, depending upon the size. This is a 68-year-old male who presented with low back pain. Now, abdominal aortic aneurysms are more commonly seen in men than females. As we zoom in, we can see a focal dilatation of the abdominal aorta anterior to L4, and this measured greater than five centimeters which is going to need to get pushed on to advanced imaging such as ultrasonography or CT. This is a 71 year old male who presented with a lumbar radiculopathy. X-rays were taken and there is a focal dilatation of the abdominal aorta anterior to L3. Now at L12 you'll notice some large osteophyte formation and it's definitely very close to the atherosclerotic placking. I'm commonly asked, is that going to puncture or cause um, a rupture? And in short, the answer is no. Remember, you're looking at a 2D image of a 3D object, and a lot of this osteophyte formation is anterolateral in location and on the opposite side of that atherosclerotic placking, and that's best visualized on axial imaging on CTs. As we zoom in, we can see the abdominal aortic aneurysm well, and this does need to be followed up with advanced imaging, either ultrasonography or CT. And remember, CT is the gold standard for accurate assessment of an abdominal aortic aneurysm and for looking at any components that are dissecting. This is a 58-year-old male who presented with low back pain. and. The atherosclerotic placking, I think, is rather obvious, but the amount of bowel gas and the technical factors, it's not easy to see the anterior boundary of that abdominal aorta. So you have to play with the factors, window level contrast, zoom in as best as possible uh, to not miss something like this. Once zoomed in, the abdominal aortic aneurysm is more visible and again, this patient will need to be referred for advanced imaging for appropriate assessment. This is a 55 year old male with low back pain and there's only subtle atherosclerosis noted. 
but once you zoom in, there's an obvious abdominal aortic aneurysm that measures greater than six centimeters, and this will need to go on to ultrasound or CT. The common iliac artery region looks fine. There's no evidence of atherosclerosis, and what you're looking for is any sort of dilatation measuring greater than two centimeters of either common iliac artery. Don't forget, the size of the abdominal aortic aneurysm as seen on an x-ray is an approximation. It's only the calcified regions that we can see and measure. It could be much larger than that. That's why ultrasound and CT are the gold standards for measuring abdominal aortic aneurysms. They can see the non-calcified portions. In this example, we have a 64-year-old male who presented with significant low back pain and hypotension. The abdominal aortic aneurysm measures greater than seven centimeters. So in this case, this would be an immediate medical consultation for advanced imaging. Let's look at a frontal view of the lumbar spine with an obvious focal dilatation of the abdominal aorta. The only problem is it's challenging to measure the medial aspect of this uh, aneurysm due to the overlying spine. In my rule of thumb is anytime you can see what looks like dilatation or an aneurysm on a frontal view, it's best to refer out for ultrasonography or CT for an appropriate measurement. Here's a 67 year old male. And if you take a look at the abdominal aorta, there is a curvilinear cyst wall calcification, and this would be a, indicative of an abdominal aortic aneurysm and another reason to go ultrasound to see how big this really is. This is an 83 year old male with a host of significant clinical red flags. And zooming into the abdominal aorta, this measures greater than six centimeters. This is an 80 year old female with a history of rheumatoid arthritis and there's no significant scoliosis of the lumbar spine. Sometimes atherosclerosis will follow the convexity of a scoliosis, but in the absence of a significant scoliosis, this cyst wall calcification is too large. I'm unable to make out the medial border of this abdominal aortic aneurysm, so this is going to get referred for ultrasound or CT. This is a 70 year old male with debilitating low back pain. And on first glance, the atherosclerosis is pretty easily seen. However, when you zoom in, there is an 11 centimeter abdominal aortic aneurysm, and this would be an immediate medical referral. This is an 85 year old female and sometimes there's so much going on from a degenerative, postural, technical, and pathologic perspective that uh, an appropriate assessment really can't be done on x-ray. And this would be a good example of when it's time for a CT. And in the case of endovascular surgical repair of a abdominal aortic or common iliac uh, artery rupture, these stents can be put in. And this is a good example of one of those stents. All right, time for a couple questions. What is the gold standard for measuring an abdominal aortic aneurysm? And that would be computed tomography or CT. Ultrasound would have also been a good choice if present. What is the minimum measurement of an abdominal aortic aneurysm? The best answer on here would be 3.0 centimeters. What is the appropriate recommendation for a patient with an 8 centimeter abdominal aortic aneurysm? And that would be an immediate medical consultation. All right, and thank you for listening. If you enjoyed, please like and subscribe. And of course, if you have any comments, please put them below. Thanks again.